This week on The Vision, there has always been a distrust between generations. We used to call it the generation gap, but some new rift appears to be developing between parents and children. In fact, it's more than a rift. In some cases, it's open hatred. This is The Vision, written by the late David Wilkerson in 1974. When it was first published, the prophecies Wilkerson wrote about were unthinkable. Sadly, in the 21st century, these foresights now read like old news headlines. The Vision is brought to you by World Challenge, a ministry dedicated to empowering, equipping, and encouraging Christians in their daily faith. We're committed to evangelism and helping the least of these everywhere in the world. Here at World Challenge, we believe in empowering leaders to more effectively bring God into their neighborhoods. As part of that effort, we're offering a week-long community health evangelism training seminar for ministry leaders and evangelists who are passionate about seeing God radically transform communities. To learn more about this training opportunity, look for the TOT training on our website, worldchallenge.org. Now, Chapter 4 of The Vision, The Number One Youth Problem of the Future, read by Jason Staples. I hate my parents. The number one youth problem of the future will be hatred of parents. The world is soon going to be shocked by thousands upon thousands of teenagers who confess, I hate my parents. We are now entering that period when a man's worst enemies will be members of his own household, father against son, mother against daughter, and in-laws hating one another. A teenager's biggest problem will be how to live with his parents. Already, that parental hatred is spreading like cancer all over the world. Teenagers who are forced to live with hypocritical parents are learning to hate them. It is no longer an innocent kind of bitterness that can be outgrown. It is a real hatred that makes mortal enemies of flesh and blood relatives. A New Sex Drug I believe a new sex drug will be concocted and distributed soon by the black market to teenagers and students. It will break down moral restraint and lead thousands of teenagers into promiscuous sex activity. At the same time, I see a tremendous change coming to the entire drug culture. Outside of this sex drug that I predict is coming, this generation will not be lost to drugs. Marijuana will be legalized. Anything we can't handle, we legalize. But legalized marijuana will lead to boredom. There will be more dissatisfied adults smoking pot than teenagers looking for a thrill. Pot will be an adult problem in the future. LSD, speed, and other psychedelics will become less and less popular. I predict that students will be going more towards spiritual highs than chemical highs. We will always have a drug problem in this nation, but it will not be nearly as big a problem as hatred in the home. Teenage alcoholism will increase. While so much attention is being given to drug abuse, a growing number of teenagers and students will turn to drink. We are going to face a critical drinking problem with teenagers between 13 and 16 years of age. It is in part a backlash from all the teaching in our schools about the dangers of narcotics. We have succeeded in frightening preteeners away from hard drugs, but we have not emphasized the dangers of alcohol. Consequently, many kids who were told by their parents that parental drinking habits were not as bad as teenage narcotic habits have decided to drop drugs and take up alcohol. However, even though I'm predicting a tragic increase in teenage alcoholism, I am also convinced that it will not be nearly as big a problem as bitterness toward parents. Actually, bitterness toward dad and mom will be the reason why many will turn to drink. Kids are being provoked. The Bible warns parents against provoking their children to anger, but this commandment is being ignored by a great majority of parents. In the past, when young people felt betrayed and provoked by the establishment and by the government, they took to the streets, demonstrating, rioting, and resisting. Hating politicians and despising government leaders, students vented their anger by attempting to overthrow the system. The revolution has temporarily quieted down, and many former rebels are now trying to work within the system to change it. But watch out. The anger that led students to riot in the streets is still seething beneath the surface. It is now being directed toward hypocritical parents who preach one thing to their teenagers while they themselves live something else. I see coming a rising tide of anger among teenagers especially, and it is going to break out as a new kind of demonstration in the home. Hatred is going to spread, 
As parents provoke their children to anger by poor examples and harsh attitudes, this hatred will take deep root and will cause many to forsake home and run off, hoping to find understanding. Even ministers of the gospel will not be able to escape this coming problem. Bitterness and rebellion from teenagers will strike the best of homes in this nation. It will be a hatred and bitterness that will stagger and frighten parents. Many will not understand how to cope with it, and most parents will not even comprehend how and where it started. One thing is certain. Parents are going to feel betrayed, unwanted, and hated. This hatred and bitterness will be so widespread that I believe it will be the nation's number one problem in the very near future. Hassle over fashions. Changing fashions will continue to be one of the major factors causing this breakdown in communication. Parents, confused by the fast pace of change, will react with firm discipline but without much love or understanding. Hairstyles, funky clothes, freaky music, and lazy attitudes about dress will continue to be the major cause of misunderstanding. Teenagers of the future will not even begin to understand their parents' point of view and will simply turn them off. This will lead to shipwreck and disaster in many homes. Overly strict parents are going to be the hardest hit of all. In an honest effort to maintain old-fashioned standards, some parents are going to find it necessary to exert tremendous pressure on their teenagers to conform to their ideas of dress and behavior. But the pressures among their own peers will be so strong that it will cause many sincere teenagers to accept the ideas of their own friends and to reject the rules of their parents. On the other hand, those parents who become overly permissive and allow their teenagers to dress and act as they please will soon discover that the teenagers do not know how to handle so much freedom so early in life. They will go too far too fast and will at the same time resent their parents for not providing some kind of discipline. Parents will find it increasingly difficult to know how to deal with changing moods and fashions. It will take supernatural divine guidance and only those who are granted wisdom from heaven will know how to cope with it. A reaction against spiritual emptiness. The bitterness and rebellion that I see coming among teenagers will be caused in part by the spiritual emptiness in many homes. Spiritually void parents have lately been discouraging their children from getting involved with Jesus fanatics. Parents have become more concerned about their social standing than the spiritual condition of their children. Within this next decade, teenagers are going to face apocalyptic crises. They're going to be living in a world that is shaken to its very foundation. There will be wars, rumors of wars, and unrest of nations worldwide. There will be calamities, earthquakes, pestilences, and drastic weather changes that frighten and startle their young minds. Parents who have neglected to provide spiritual guidance and eternal hope are going to face a payday. Teenagers are going to resent parents who have robbed them of this experience. The home that has had no God, no church, no spiritual teaching, no Bible, and no hunger for God is headed straight for disaster. I am not preaching now. I am prophesying. I predict that teenagers raised in such homes are going to turn on their parents with venom, hatred, and rebellion. A younger radical is coming. The radicals of the near future will be younger than those of today, better educated and totally alienated from father and mother. We are about to reap a tragic harvest as a result of recent years of parental neglect, apathy, permissiveness, and overprotectiveness, and an astronomical divorce rate. Many of these radicals will be preteeners who will speak out in their own underground newspapers against the hypocrisy of parents. The teen gangs of the future in our major cities will be younger, more vicious, and more down on parents. These baby gangs who have been raised on TV crime, TV dinners, and babysitters will turn against their parents with a passion. Many of these young children already feel like total strangers to their fathers and mothers. It will be easy for them to hate because they have known so little about real love. Payday is coming for divorce. The life and death battle for survival for millions of innocent children will be lost because of divorce. One out of every two and a half marriages now ends in divorce and payday is about to come. While divorce has become epidemic, more and more children have become scarred and damaged as a result. The homes of some of the most ideal couples are now breaking up and the children are caught in the middle. Picture an army of millions of little children who have been traumatically wounded and scarred by divorce and separation of their parents now growing up as young teenagers ready to settle the score. 
They've been taught to hate one or both of their parents because there is no middle ground left. It is a revolution that has moved off the streets into the homes. Death to parents. The Bible clearly predicts that a day will come when sons and daughters will betray their parents and will even cause them to be put to death. I could never understand that prophecy until now. It actually means that we face undeclared war in our homes, with a man's worst enemies being those children of his own household, the father turning against son, mother against daughter, and betrayal of all family ties. Many parents will die a thousand deaths because of the tragic betrayal of their very own children. But these children are going to betray for what they believe is a legitimate reason. Many of these parents have not even tried to stick it out. They become so involved with their own problems and hangups that they've had little or no time to deal with their children about problems that bother them. Kids have been left to handle their own problems and they can't manage them. They have witnessed their parents cheating on one another, lying, fighting, and running off. Rebellion of Preacher's Kids Along with those who rise up in rebellion will be the sons and daughters of ministers who one day will stand before dad or mother and say with hatred, You are a phony. You've preached one thing and lived another. You said your marriage was impossible to work out, and yet you expected me to handle impossible problems without giving in. Get lost now, old man, and don't do any more preaching to me. You couldn't handle the problems of life, so you have nothing at all to say to me. The Bible says that godly mothers will live to hear their daughters rise up and call them blessed. But in this next decade, many, many mothers are going to live to see their daughters rise up and curse them. A generation of teenage girls will rise up and curse a generation of mothers who are caught up in a sensuous world of drinking, carousing, smoking, cheating, and divorcing. There are some instances when divorce cannot be avoided. But in those instances, God has a way of balancing the books and keeping the home together. Children can survive without bitterness and rebellion and can still love both their parents when an unreconcilable situation has been healed through prayer and the power of God. Fewer runaways. In the next decade, there will be fewer runaways and more kids staying at home to make it miserable on their parents. Most parents do not want to go to the trouble of reporting their kids as missing and would rather have them home to let them have their own way than to risk the embarrassment of a runaway. Parents in the future are going to make it clear to their teenagers that they have no need to run away. Many parents are simply going to give up and tell their children, take what you want, do as you please, just don't run away. The inducements once available only out on the street are now available in many homes. It will be possible to be a runaway at heart and still remain at home. Kids will be able to neglect their parents, live under the same roof, but not even communicate. They will not even be expected to communicate, and little will be expected in the way of understanding or friendship. They will be like enemies living in a war zone under a truce. Hell for hypocrites. Parents who smoke, drink, and cheat while lecturing their kids about morals will completely lose all influence over their children because of their hypocrisy. Young people will no longer be in a mood to obey parents who preach one thing and live another. Young people will demand their parents to show me. Parents who drink cocktails and chain smoke cigarettes will no longer be able to tell their kids to quit smoking pot. I see coming in the not too distant future a total revulsion from all parental hypocrisies by young people. Preachers who smoke and then stand in the pulpits preaching against drug abuse by teenagers will be scoffed at for their hypocrisy. Ministers and parents who have excused their hang-ups and habits as being less sinful than the habits and sins of teenagers are going to have to give an account. The preaching of hypocrites will lose all its influence. A supernatural yearning for love. While many homes are breaking up, while divorce is on the increase, and while many lives are being shipwrecked, I see developing nationwide a hunger among young people for the security of a loving home and family. This yearning will become deeper in the years immediately ahead. While hatred abounds and bitterness grows, there will be a cry for parental love and guidance. A counter-revolution of love. The Bible predicts that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. In the midst of this revolution of the home, I see a counter-revolution developing. I hear the tearful, heartbroken cry of thousands upon thousands of young people who yearn to live in a home where there is peace, security, and love, and God is going to intervene. 
There is going to be a supernatural awakening in the middle of this rebellion. The Holy Spirit is going to heal and restore many. He will turn the hearts of many children back to their parents and will bring them together again. This, of course, is only for those who heed the call of the Spirit. I see the Holy Spirit mending the hearts and minds of children shattered by broken homes. I see hope and miraculous cures in the midst of despair and confusion. You've been listening to Jason Staples and his reading of Chapter 4 of The Vision, the number one youth problem of the future. The Vision is brought to you by World Challenge, a ministry dedicated to empowering, equipping, and encouraging Christians in their daily faith. We're committed to evangelism and helping the least of these everywhere in the world. If you're enjoying this podcast, let me suggest you download the Gary Wilkerson podcast. Gary will help you live a better life and make a better world through Jesus Christ. New episodes are available every Thursday on our website, worldchallenge.org, or wherever you sign up for podcasts. You can also see a video version of the Gary Wilkerson podcast on the World Challenge website. Next week on The Vision, David Wilkerson saw persecution aimed at the church in general and Christians in particular on the horizon. It's here. Persecution Madness, next week on The Vision.